That's right. Clarissa Hawes joins me now. Clarissa, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Today. I'm doing well, Clarissa. I hope you're doing well as well. Last time we spoke was on Monday, and we got to chat about what was happening on the ground in Oakland, where you were there, seeing what's happening real time with AB5. Has anything changed as we move throughout the week? Well, initially, or last week when I talked to um, the, you know, the kind of the organizers of this movement, um, they were talking about a three-day stop it work stoppage and then they moved to a one day initial um, protest they decide well maybe we can you know be heard and one day because after a few days it, people kind of start having differing you know opinions about what they're fighting for and everything but but then um the port and i attended a meeting with some of port officials and they said you know the thing please don't minimize the impact you know we have shut down every terminal on monday you know like no one is like two to three trucks an hour are getting in and out of here and if you um you know like if you say that there was only a, a few people protesting you know it's really going to upset uh, um you know the drivers who you know gave up loads and to do this. And um, so, but that's exactly what they did, you know, minimize the number because I was there and, and, you know, I saw that there was more than 130 drivers and, and that were protesting. And so then that fueled them to, to keep going, you know, until the port, you know, officials, the steamship lines uh, and the terminal operators recognize, um, you know, that, that they, you know, that there were more there. And so it kind of, you know, was fueled to the fire for them to stay. Something that's interesting in this entire story as well, and good morning, Clarissa, thank you for joining us, is the fact that there was also support by the ILWU workers that were at the Port of Oakland as well. They decided to not cross the picket line, which I think is interesting as we're talking about ILWU contract being up and the negotiations that they're going on as well, them fighting the fight not necessarily for themselves, but for their drivers, who of course are a central point of the business. Was there any type of sense of the kind of camaraderie between the unionized port workers and the independent contracted drivers? in some ways um you know like you know they showed up um monday was kind of um the protesters didn't get in like the initial goal was that they would arrive before um the longshoremen started working the ships and that they would you know if they they said there was kind of an understanding that they wouldn't cross the the protest line as long as um you know, if drivers were there, but at that time they didn't get there early enough. So when the gates were open and no one was there, they drove on in to work. And so then, you know, after kind of the port minimized the impact on Monday, they were there at 5.40 in the morning and were had drivers, um, mainly at the SSA terminal, which is the largest um, terminal that's where a focus was and that's where like a hundred you know i was there when they were like um you know like getting their stuff and go heading to their cars they're like hey we're not mad about this you know we um you know but we support we're working without a contract right now so we're willing to you know stand up for these guys as well so um and and so it was kind of yeah and, and they said we're not mad we're you know, we're going to need you um, as well, you know, like with ongoing negotiations with their contract as well. So, yeah, it was, you know, it was, the, it, you know, I watched as they kind of milled around and talked to each other. And, you know, it was kind of a, it, I mean, I can't say other workers were at the other terminals went in, but the, the SSA is the largest one there. So that's the one where they really kind of made it, took a stand or what uh, yesterday um, morning. And Clarissa, do you have any insights as what seems to be the hopeful next steps or really the end goal here? I know these protests are really going to make things inconvenient for some people, but how does this start to get AB5 really kind of shifted or turned away? Well, there, you know, there's been several trade groups that have um, sent, you know, are urging, you know, Governor Newsom to delay um, implementing this because nobody really knows um, how to interpret it to make sure that they're complying with the law. And, and so they wanted the governor to, to really take this off the books and say, this is a bad, 
um, law, we need to, you know, postpone this and, and figure out how um, these independent contractors who don't want to be employee drivers can still make a living. You know, I was talking to some that were talking about their house payments and, and, you know, in California, everything is, you know, very, it's very expensive to live there. And they're like, I can't go back to a job where I'm at paid hourly, you know, when I've done this job for 25 to 30 years. And I know, you know, they might, you know, I know the loads I need to take and where I need to go. And then, you're going to shift me to somebody that's going to control how many hours I can work and, and where, you know, where I can work. And, and so they want to be remain independent and, you know, they're, and they want, you know, the terminals as well as the steamship lines to recognize they're, that they're important to the supply chain. That's a really great point that you bring up, Clarissa. Myself and Michael Vincent were talking about this yesterday. And one of the other big draws of being an independent contractor or an owner-operator is controlling your own destiny. But then you also have an incentive to do your job really, really well, right? Because if you are doing your job really well, you make yourself more desirable to be hired on as an IC, you make more money, et cetera, et cetera. But if you're a company driver and you've got that guaranteed hourly, either an hourly rate or saying, you know what, if I haul one load or if I haul five loads, I'm still going to get paid the same amount you kind of almost lose that incentive to do your job well. So it would kind of make more sense that companies, especially now as we're still sitting in this place where we need drivers to be incentivized to perform well, would want to support the, their drivers and their ICs and, and kind of giving them what they want. Have we seen any type of companies break out of this and say, you know what, we are going to come out and support our drivers and our ICs who are in this in this fight? Or are the companies kind of towing the line of the law? Well, at the... You know, it's kind of a different um, issue at the port of Oakland, you know, like 90 percent of the drivers, you know, are independent there. And but there's, you know, like they they were kind of waiting to see how everything played out in among all the the independent contractors in California, you know, that the major motor carriers, you know, were part of, the, you know, in California, were part of the CTA, California Trucking Association, you know, you know, they did file a legal challenge, but, you know, now that, and it kind of went up, they were kind of waiting to see how this would impact them. And then when it's, um, the Supreme Court decided not to hear it, then now, yeah, it's like, we're going to enforce it and soon and you're, your business is not legal and you need to, you know, fix it. So, but yeah, these, th these port drivers, they grind, you know, they know how much they need to make and they're worried about um, if something's not done, that th this, there's not going to ha have an ability to make, you know, a living and support their families. And some just say, I may get out of the industry at a time when they need drivers. So I think that's a great point there, definitely limiting the amount of drivers that kind of see this as a state to work in or really an industry for them overall. When you're looking at the situation, of course, it's going to be limited to the state of California and more specifically, you're looking at Oakland. But is there any sense of this potentially breaking out of the state or out of the region? Yes, um, there's been talk, you know, I know um, in Illinois, there's kind of been some you know, some talk of wanting to adopt this similar model there. And other states have, have, have made a run to do it. And California, a lot of policies and laws that come out, legislation that comes out of California is adopted, you know, federally, like, especially with carb emissions and, you know, like, it, you know, for diesel trucks and things like that. So, you know, California has a lot of sway with with you know the legislation that they adopt there it's gonna be interesting to watch for sure was there anything that surprised you from the protests at all maybe kind of the solidarity i know that we you covered a lot of the people's convoy which was another big trucking protest was there any type of similarities between kind of leadership and organization or was one organized better than the other with with um all it was like a you know everybody was coming together shaking hands hey do you need water do you need and it was you know it was such a melting pot of different cultures it was just amazing i had you know um at different places you know i interviewed them they're like hey do you want you know are you hungry and i'm like reporters don't turn down free food so you know it's like but it was just amazing to to meet people that have come here um, first, second generation, you know, Americans that, 
came here to, you know, kind of be their own boss and, you know, and they feel like that freedom is being taken away. And so groups that may would never speak, you know, outside of, um, you know, outside the port, we're all there together talking with their families. And, you know, it, it was really a neat show of solidarity among the port community. That's great to hear. And Clarissa, this has been awesome having you on. We'll continue to follow up with you as the situation develops. Right now, we're going to take a short break, but we'll be right back with more Great Waves Now.